So here we are asked to calculate confidence intervals uh, on the basis of a sample of observations for the IQ of students. So the sample size is 15. The sample average in that sample IQ sample average was 107.3. The variance in that sample was 32.5. So that's the information we're being given. Now in uh, the first part of the question, we asked to calculate a confidence interval. And if you're an experienced confidence interval calculator, you know you need the sample variance of IQ hat, and that's calculated as variance of IQ divided by N, N. And then the standard deviation of IQ hat is gonna be the square root of that, and that is gonna be 1.472. So we'll need that when we in 2.1 calculate the confidence intervals. Now, to do that, we need to know how IQ is distributed. Well, in fact, we don't need, uh, we don't know how it is distributed here. So to be able to proceed, we need one of two things. We either need a sample size which is large enough for us to invoke a central limit theorem. And if we can, then we know that IQ hat, the sample average, is going to be approximately normally distributed. However, in our case, the sample size is a mere 15, and I think it would be a little too heroic to invoke this assumption. So alternatively, we need to assume that IQ is normally distributed. None of the information gives us that, so we make it quite explicit that we assume that IQ is normally distributed. However, the variance of IQ is unknown. That means if we assume that normal assumption, then given an unknown variance, we know that IQ bar, the sample average, is going to be T distributed here with 14 degrees of freedom, N minus 1. So this is the assumption we're going to make here and on which we proceed with our calculation. So we uh, want to calculate the confidence interval. So let's first uh, start with the structure of that confident in confidence interval, a probability. In this case, that's going to be 95%. And we are after the unknown population mean of IQ. And that's going to be, uh, we're going to have a lower boundary and upper boundary. That's going to be centered around IQ bar, the sample average. And what we subtract and add is the product of two things, a value from the relevant distribution, the distribution of IQ bar, and then the standard error of IQ bar, which we already calculated up here. So S IQ bar. So we know IQ bar, that was this, 107.3. We know the standard deviation, that was 1.4720. So the only thing that we are left with now is the value from the T distribution that cuts off 2.5% of the probability in, in either tail. Okay, And we have 14 degrees of freedom, 15 minus 1. So we go to 14, 0 0.025, to 5, so that is 2.145. With this information, we can go back to our confidence interval. We now have all the three values which we need to calculate the lower and upper bounds for this confidence interval. We plug in all the numbers, and this is the result. You should get the lower, conf uh, the lower bound is 104.1426, and the upper bound 110.4574. So it's a 95% probability that we that the unknown population uh, mean for IQ should be between these two values. So the second part of the question asks if there's a claim that the average IQ is 113 at the school, should we be happy with that claim? And the answer is clearly no. This value is well outside the, um, the confidence interval.